Hola chicos y bienvenidos a un nuevo episodio de Pro Cyclist and Pro Cyclist 2021. I don't like to say numbers in Spanish. Uh, but yeah, welcome back to our Pro Cyclist with Euskaltel. Euskadi, I know I took a bit of a break since the last episode, but we do have the Tour de France in the meantime, and I can't upload twice a day because I'm a student and I study hard. But today we'll have the Vuelta Ciclista Comunidad de Madrid, then the Mercantour Classic, then the Mont Ventoux de Nivelle Challenge, and finally, the French Championships, in which we'll try and not finish last. That's my objective for the day. We do have 72% fitness to kick things off, so an absolute stinker of a start. But without further ado, let's jump in. We do have a plus two to kick off this Vuelta Asturias. However, uh, we are being asked to work for our team. Uh, I don't know who our leader is in this stage. I'm actually quite curious to see um to see who it is. Uh, it's not going to be Alexis, is it? Like, it's going to be Martin, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be Martin. Even though I have better stats than him, um, we'll uh, we'll work for uh, for our teammate today, and hopefully. Hopefully we'll have better race day conditions um, as the episode goes on. We should have so because I did have a complete break when it comes to, uh, to our energy in the month of like our April, May. So yeah, let's just get to the front of the race, pace a bit and mainly I'll try and pace in the first cat um, to try and uh, well, do the most and uh, well, put our leader in the best conditions. And the, the rhythm has massively increased here in this uh, slight hill which didn't like Strike me as very difficult, uh, but now oh, the peloton is having none of it. And it appears that I am going to be the only rider in my team with energy going into the final climb. Nice one, Euskaltel. And as I said, my point was to pace in this climb. Uh, it appears that Eduardo Affini is going to do said job for me. Uh, not a big fan, if I'm being honest, not a big fan of it, because I really wanted to do so. Uh, oh, pretty much is there. Wagwan, my G. Uh, he does have energy. He's got 7G fitness. Come on, we all have a shit day. Um, who is the main favorite? Caruso? Wait, he's not on the Giro. That's surprising. 77 fitness for him. That's why he's not on the Giro. Uran with a good day. Okay, fuck it to go. Uh, and I am the sole good rider in my team position wise because the rest of my team is very much at the back. 900 meters until the summit. It is Matteo Jorgensen in the first group pacing and he's going to get the KOM points actually ahead of Roglic. And then Rigoberto Uran. Uh, well, I mean, Martin is in the group for our team. Don't know where, but apparently he's there. We're going to try and recover energy, unless there's an attack, and there is an attack by Sergio Iguita, and he's immediately still. An attack. Iguita and Rigo Uran. Ooh. They've, they've, they've gone with the, the double. Interesting. Didn't expect that. Did not expect that. Right. I wanted to uh, maybe use some acrobatic descent, but clearly uh, the slope wasn't hard enough, or maybe me. I just didn't have enough energy. Uh, because we're going to have a final sprint, despite a late attack by uh, Diego Rubio. Caruso in the wheel, I guess the entire peloton is going to follow that move. Indeed, they are. Uh, I'll increase my rhythm. Where's Roglic? Are they going for Jonas Vingegaard? Mm, I mean, he's got a plus four, but he does have 86 fitness, so he's not having a great, great start of the race either. Uh, well, let's go 99, I guess. Because this is the final sprint, and we're not going to win, obviously, because it's a sprint. And it's a win for Jonas Vingegaard. Very well, Jumbo Visma have done well. Luis Mas Bonnet, for whatever team that is, finishes in P10. That's, is that Timukio? Jeez, all right. Uh, we're going to be first of our team in P22. All right, once again, uh, we are being asked to work at the front of the group. Uh, and I guess I'll do so. Uh, I'll work in the climbers, though, because I ain't about to work on the, on, on the flat portions. Uh, but we'll try as well and work in the uh, Alto de San Miguel de Aralar, uh, because, I mean... It is 10k average of 8%, so it would be a climb that like suits me. But also, hopefully, that suits um, our, our leader, good old Godson Martin. Crash in the peloton. Crash in the peloton involving Godson Martin, but no one is getting dropped to help him. And I don't think that's my job. Like, guys, you know he's the leader of the team, right? When I, when I crash, they don't wait for me. So I'm guessing they should wait for Godson Martin. But they're not. Right, well, we're going to start the final climb. Uh, but I had planned on pacing for Godson Martin. Godson is out. So I don't really have an edge pacing here. I guess I'll just, go and, like, I'll just play for myself here. 
uh, and race for myself, should I say, as Jonas Vingegaard, the leader of this race with a plus four yet again. My guy has 85 fitness and he's at consecutive plus fours. Are you mad? Midway through the climb, we're struggling with energy. We're struggling with the energy. I can't lie. I can't lie. Um, try my best to keep our position here. But it's not going to be easy. On Cancel the Summit, we've been slightly dropped uh, with Ruben Guerrero. And I don't think we're going to be able to make the cut. That's an L. That is an L. Ah, we're so close. So fucking close. Rohe Adria is there as well. We'll fight for the top 10, and by fighting, I do mean we're gonna like get dropped for the top 10. It's gonna be a win today for Maxi Sharman ahead of Jonas Vingegaard and Rigo Uran. Uh, Roja Adria with a P5, he's done very well to, uh, to recover from the race, but yeah, we're gonna lose time today. <laughs> I made one mistake, which was to pace 30 kilometers for Gotcha Martin. Had I not done that, I would have made this on it. We're gonna end up losing 1 minute and 18 seconds today on Maxi Schachmann. Um, yeah, not much I could have done. Not much I could have done. It's a shame because I would have loved to uh, to fight for that um that green that uh, white jersey. Sorry, but was it meant to be? Was it meant to be? Right, we've got one more stage in this Volta a Madrid. I believe it's a sprint stage. So yeah, I won't do anything yet. Plus three to wrap up uh today's race. We have uh we have Carte Blanche now. We don't have to work for thirty k. However, I will be working for the sprinters in my team if I'm allowed to because right now I can't select anyone. So we'll see if I'm allowed to or just help them or not. If not, then, I mean, it'll be like P73 or something. And we'll just vibe to the next race. In case you go, and I won't be able to help uh, my sprinters. So I guess it'll be a solo run uh, for, uh, for your boy. I mean, I'm not going to be able to attack, clearly, because uh, it's going to be a mass sprint. We're going to come back first on the breakaway, uh, because that's not done yet, actually. The breakaway is doing some resistance here. 20 seconds with 2.4k to go. Is the win in the group ahead, Matteo Jorgensen? Surely wants to do it with Vincenzo Albanese in his wheel. The peloton has started their effort behind. It's close, it's gonna be close. Either Helling launching Alpes and Phoenix towards potentially win. Philipson being blocked by Antratnik, and it's a win for Vincenzo Albanese ahead of Jasper Philipson and Peter Sagan. What a dub for the breakaway. What a fucking dub. Johnny and Cole comes in like P7 for the German champion. And we're gonna be second of our team with a P20. B20 just behind either Schelling. Get in there. And we'll wrap up this Vuelta Ciclista Comunidad de Madrid in P14 of the GC. I think a top 10 could have been on the cards, uh, but nothing, nothing more. Mercantour Classic. Uh, it is going to be a tough one. It's a tough, very tough stage actually um, between um, Valberg and Valberg. And also, it's a huge start list. Ben Alcarapaz, Gegenart, Richie Bolt, basically your first recovery race. Oh, sorry, um, a recon race, sorry, for, uh, for the leaders of Ineos ahead of the Tour de France. Mikel Landa is there with Thibaut Pinot for FDG. Chicon is there for Trek. Bard is there for TSM. Michael Woods is there for Israel Startup Nation. Buchmann, Jacob Fulsong. There's a lot of good names, a lot of good names. But we're here, right? We've got 80 Mountain. We can do something today. I swear, I've been dropped in a this and a downhill because Dimitri Champion or Thomas Champion keeps on blocking me. Really? Is that, is that how we're going to do it? Are they, are they actually like not letting me back? Oh, come on. Really? Oh, wait, no, they're just, they're, they're pacing, pacing. Okay. Well, that's going to be fun if they're pacing 65k to go. I thought the peloton was taking a break. Attacked by Bernal, Bardet, and Carabas. Really? They're attacking on the flat. They're attacking literally on the flat portion. Thibaut, why? Why? Like, what the fuck is the point? It's flat, you dickheads! They're dumber than movie star, man! Fuck's sake! That Barney is another front! Where's Zinios? Where's Carabas? Hold on, where the fuck is Carabas? That's Yates? I, I don't know. Attacked by Bernal. Well, I guess it's gonna be just, like everyone for for themselves now. Is that, is that Pierre Roland? That's Victor Lafay. Mad. Well done, lad. Right, we're coming back on uh, a few riders that attacked. I definitely did not have the legs to follow, but here's Chicone. 
as Victor Lafay, uh, right up is Buchmann, then I believe, wait, is that Bardet then? Then Landa, then Bernal. So right now that's a top five with me. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. What's the end of John Buchmann? Oh, he's dead. Right, we're, we're moving forward top five right now. Come on. Mikel Landa is chasing again Bernal, London A1, Bernal in, uh, well, F, uh, which is also where you can, uh, or the letter you can use to describe my performance right now. As how has Carapaz managed to get yellow back then? I don't understand. He was dropped with me. He had no yellow before I had no yellow. And somehow, he's managed to drop me. How does that work? So I'm extremely surprised to see Carapaz literally hammering it down. Well, I mean, not hammering it down, but pacing against Bernal. Really surprising. Really, really surprising. He's gonna allow Bardet to take one turn. We'll have a top ten, a top five nonetheless, which is nice. Like, it's it's. I'm happy with the top five. Don't get me wrong, but like, we're we're not gonna be able to fight for anything more because they have much more energy than I do. And uh, I'm gonna bonk very soon. There they go. They're they're going for the move, and it's gonna be P5 for me. It's a win for Bernal ahead of Mikel Landa. Roman Bardet will come in P3. Carapaz and myself in P5. You know, P5 with that opposition. Am I, like, allowed to be disappointed? Alright, contract situation. Now, do I have any more World Tour teams? I do not. As I said, if I were to, like, move to World Tour, it would be to... Oh, I don't know. I, li I like Quebec Arsenal. Or Quebec next half. Right, it would be to Kofidis, realistically. I could move to Astana, but I do have my own Astana save on, like, my personal save, and I, I, I think I've had enough of this team. I could go to Total Direct Energy. Or Total Energy. I think I'm going to try and move up to Walter with, with Kofidis. My aim was to be in Walter within two years. And if I can be leader of a French team on, like, a French race, then that'd be nice. Like, it'll be me against Guillaume Martin. All right, we're now on the race. I actually like and face the Mercantour uh, Alpe Maritime Classic because we have the Mont Ventoux Challenge with uh, two ascensions of the Mont Ventoux. Or the Mount Montu being climbed twice, I guess. Uh, first up, the one towards the Chalet Renard, well, halfway through the Mont Ventoux, and then the actual Mont Ventoux. I don't know from which side. Uh, I don't think. Are, are we reaching. Um, we, we may climb from the same face. I think we do. So we're climbing from Bidouin and from Alocène. Uh But what's the competition? Mikel Landa, Joe Almeida, and Simon Carl. So we are. Getting, uh, I mean, some of our opposition we know, mainly Mikel Landa, uh, Almeida and Carr. I haven't faced them in a while, I think. So it'll be uh, quite fun to see how we perform. Hopefully we can do well. We do have a fitness peak. And maybe this is one of our season objectives. So I'm going to try my best to do well. Right, and we're going to start the uh, first Mont Ventoux, at least the Chalet Renard 13k, an average of 8.2%. This is actually like the toughest side or the toughest part of the Mont Ventoux is the one that you want to go through because when you reach the Chalet Renard, you can see the summit and in your head, you know that you've got the legs to do it, or at least you've got the, the, the head and the mindset to do it. Um, but I don't think that really applies to VCM. I don't think when I've got no yellow, there's an option to say, yo, you can see the summit, can I get a boost? I don't think that works. It works in real life. Uh, but in real life, we've got Cuadrado leading the peloton. A break of 11 at the front. We'll take a quick look at who's there. Uh, we've got Pierre de Tia, Mazuko, Perichon, Vignebo, Godin, De Vita, McCloskey, De Vometre, and Roy Courtiens. We're losing a few positions here and there. We're still being protected by Juarez but we do have the exceptional R Jonathan Lastra with us. Actually, Biscara, move on my protection with me, please. Thank you. Ideally, if we can make the car here, because the summit is like a couple of hundred meters uh, to go. It's like this right hand as the summit. If Biscara can stay with me, I think he will. I think he will. Perfect. Right, we're gonna have this guy. Azur Mendy is well with an unbelievable day, plus four, and I can't even use him as a teammate, so I guess it's our Cody 79 mountain today for Azur Mendy. Fair play. And we started the second Ventoux. Come on, this one is the big one. 19k until the summit of the bold mount, as we call it in French. Uh, because, well, there's no trees on the summit of the Ventoux, so we call it bold because we're ingenious and smart and funny. Um, but yeah, I've managed to use Azor Mendy and have him in my wheel. Uh, ideally, I can get Mikel Biscara to give me water. That would be sick. 
but we'll see. Maybe we'll, we we won't need it for the final 17k breakaway. Only 40 seconds in the lead because um, George Alba, Julian Alvarez, and Ben King have really been increasing the pace since the start of um, or since sorry the summit of the first challenge. And we've got a few attacks at the front of the peloton. Uh, let me take a look at who's attacked actually because I think there's some good names. Indeed, Higuita, Valverde, and Nick Schultz, Bernard Kusnefro also have made a move. All right, it's fine. Don't overreact. Do not panic. I've got the legs for now. It's fine. I can go solid 80. And for once, I have teammates with me. I'm not on my own, uh, which is actually quite cool to see. I mean, I would... Right now, I'm being blocked by Azurmendi, which, which sucks big times. I would have rather been on my own, I guess. Well, I'm very sad because I lost a lot of time. Sadly... Sadly, it is due to Azurmendi and Lastra because, well, they've blocked me and, like, pushed me to, like, one side of the road. So, I couldn't do fuck all. But we've at least managed to bring back, uh, or to bring ourselves back to the group, Simon Carr, Jorgensen, Vala, and mainly Joao Meda. But Landa is one minute in the lead. Unbelievable climb by Bala. Sorry, I do mean Landa, not Bala. My bad. Uh, all right, how is the energy looking? Carr, myself, and, and Almeida have very similar like energy level. Matteo Jorgensen is holding on quite well. Higuita. Higuita's gone. Alright, I think we can fight for a podium today. I think we can we we've got the legs to go for a podium. Final K, okay, we're gonna take the lead of this group. Because uh if I do get surprised at least I may have like the edge on no I don't. Right, Higuita gone. Can we get P3? It's gonna be close because Kai and Albina are just up the road. Do we have enough? Come on, come on brother. Push Come on, get in there. It's going to be P2 on the summit of the mountain for us. Realistically, don't think I could have been uh, any higher today. I think P2 was, well, my best shout. Uh, Michelanda was too strong. Um, yeah. Maybe, like, 104 is a big gap. I think, had I not been blocked by Zormendi and Lastra, it could have been around, like, 40, 45 seconds. But, yeah, I think the, the Spaniard was always going to win. And once again, we take a P2 with Euskaltel. National Championship times. And for the time trial, we are being asked to finish in the top five. Okay. I mean, we're going to struggle, I feel. Because time trials are far from my forte. Um, you can see that over on my streams. Because actually before Serge Guillaume Watt, as I stream my movie Star Career Mode, and uh, we did the NCs a couple of hours ago. I went 0 and 10, I think. Um, so, so yeah, clearly I'm, I'm far from the best. Uh, but I actually will be streaming later tonight for the rest of the Tour de France. If you want to join, like, join, just say hello. That'd be, uh, that'd be quite cool. Maybe stay if you enjoy the content, I guess. Uh, but yeah, time travel here. If they want me to be in the top 5, I suppose I have a good day. Right, it would make sense. I can't see my fitness. But I think against Cavania, Garnalek, Armirail, Benjamin Thomas, Christophe Laporte, uh, who are time trials, but actually like very good on flat terrain. We're going to struggle. I feel like Paris Pantre will be a, a nice challenge with me. And I don't know who Milon is or Delco. I'm going to guess he's like a new gen or someone that progressed a lot because I've never heard of the Donny. Moment of truth as Romain Barret departs 70 flat and 76 time trial. I expected better uh, when they said top five. All right, well, what can we do? I don't know. Literally, I have no idea. We're going to start 99, I guess. Uh, and then 73 in Inchala, I think. But since we're coming up in Monier, first place, same time as Julien Philippe. Oh, I might be going too quickly. Huh? Second time coming up in La Bordelière. Julien still leading 29-18 for the Road World Champion. What are we saying? Like 10 seconds behind? 27! And we're going to overtake Romain Bordet. That is an L. That's an L for Romain. But it makes sense because he's, he's clapped in time trouble compared to me. Uh, I'm 8th place, 28 seconds down on Julien in the second team units. Thibaut Garnalek is actually in the same time. Where's Cavania? Either Cavania has a stinker or he's, he's, he's having a stinker, I don't know. And we're now 1 second down Julien Philippe. What? Vast, vast their fuck, PCM. Final 2 kilometers. We're gonna increase our rhythm. Let's go 85 and let's go 99 for the final kilometer. Come on, brother. Use all of your energy. All of your energy. Across the line in La Foissière. Alright, it's virtual P1, same time as Alaphilippe, so we all know what that means. That means that Julien is going to win. I mean, if if we are staying 1-2, Julien's winning. 
Thibaut Garnek, he was 38 seconds down, 15 seconds behind myself. All right. Remy Kavina, he was first at the last intermediate. And he wins the time trial by 31 seconds. Fucking hell. Ah, and I would have won as well without him. Fuck. Shit, man. All right, it's P2 today. We're going to be vice French champion of the time trial element. We'll come back next year, Remy. We'll come back next year. We do, however, move up to level 14 following this uh, time trial. Actually, Puncha is the one that gives me the most amount of stats. We're going to go Puncha, I think. Yeah, okay. Let's go Puncha. All right, well, we have carte blanche in those French championships. Final race of the episode. 81 mountain, 76 in hills, 62 in sprint and 70 in acceleration. I think all I can count on is if there's like a um, like late move by Julian Philippe or something. I think it's the exact... I've managed to find the exact same park was last year and that's really pissing me off. Oh, yeah. We're going to probably do like last year. Oh, this has been a very dull race. I'm pretty sure that last year actually was in the breakaway uh, of the French NCs. I just rewatched the video and I finished 19th uh, after the mass sprint. I wasn't able to make the breakaway today, uh, but we have Alain Boileau, Ledoux, Jordan Bellico, Delacroix, Schmidt, and Elfares in the first group. Um, I had 57 sprint last time out. I now have 62. In one year, I got a plus 5 in sprint, but I did have more increases when it comes to the rest of the stats. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, as I said, I'm not really confident. I don't know if I should like try to attack, but I feel like if I attack, I'm just going to get crew up really easily. To be fair, whether I finish like 18th or 32nd is basically the same for me. When's you get to go? We have a 23-man peloton, apparently. Again, I'm going to guess some more riders are going to come back. What's going to be interesting to see, though, is that last year's winner, Arnaud Demar, is not here. Last year's runner-up, Nasser Boigny, is not here. And last year's third place, Brian Cocard, is not the leader of his team. So FDG and Arkea aren't going for a sprint. So that's going to be interesting to see. Attacks by Kosnev and Alaphilippe. It's way too far from the line for me to attack. Right, I'm going to try and follow him. I'm going to try and follow Julien. I'm going to try and follow Julien. It's, it's going to be an absolute piss take to do so. But I feel like I have to. If I want to do anything in this uh, French championship, I have to follow him. And I'm actually going to try and counter-attack him. We're going to try and counter-attack the world champion. How the fuck does he have more, more attacking energy than I do? How? Hermano! Alright, at this point, there's no point keeping the attack on. 5k to go. 20 seconds on the peloton. Let's follow Julien Alaphilippe. You better pace, brother. You better pace me to the line. I swear to God. He's actually attacking me again. Because the peloton is 20 seconds down. Clément Russo taking the helm. Of the main group. Julien. Still pacing. I have more energy than he does. 2.5k. Come on. Don't stop pacing. Don't stop believing. This is your journey. 8 seconds. 11 seconds. 6 seconds. 8 seconds. He stopped. Julien Alaphilippe has stopped pacing. He's a dickhead. He's a dickhead. The win is going to be for Florian Seneschal ahead of Cocard. Uh, yep. Seneschal Cocard of Chateau Godon. We're going to come home just with Julien Philippe to wrap up the top 10. <sighs> Had he paced, I probably would not have beaten him, but it would have been second. All right, P9 is not too bad, I guess, knowing with that, like, 62 sprint. Last year, I was 18th. Now, I'm 9th next year, I'm first. But that, nevertheless, is going to wrap up this episode. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, please do leave a like down below. Smash, actually, that like button for the comeback of the pro cyclist. Um, and, yeah, if you want to well, see the next episode, we'll have the CBU Cycling Tour. And then the Tour of Utah in the next episode and the Tour of Burgos. Actually, no, we'll, have, we'll just have Sibiu in Burgos um, or Sibiu in Utah because I don't want to have too many stages in one video. But yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed the video. As I said, leave a like down below if you did. Subscribe to your channel if you're new on here and don't want to miss a single one of my content. Follow me over on Twitch, as I said, as I stream my movie star career regularly. And I will see you in the very near future. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the funk, get your funk on, girl.